So cool, so fresh, so clean. The Motorola RAZR Razor was the world's sexiest phone, and it grandfathered a whole family tree of four-letter word phones just like it. It was like Motorola found a phone concept that worked and just couldn't let it go, even after losing $4 billion. So let's get into these interesting coincidences. Hello, Moto. One of the most defining tech movements of the 2000s were the cell phone lineups, where each cell phone looked like an evolved form of the cell phone that came out before it. Everyone's attached to their phones now, but it was the same thing 20 years ago when mobile phones really started taking off. Phones were unique back then. They were making phones smaller, more fashionable, and you could even play video games on them and listen to your favorite songs on them. For the first time ever, they made the brick phones that were the size of actual bricks smaller. So now they were like smaller bricks. These were usually attributed with the Nokia phones. And people will make jokes about Nokia phones till this day. But as the mobile phones got more popular, they were getting better, slimmer, and sleeker. And by the mid-2000s, it got really competitive for cell phones and cell phone accessories. There was a revolution in the designs and appeal of the cell phone. And even Nokia had to start thinking outside the box and started coming out with their own crazy new cell phone designs. But the hip, cool new phone brand that everyone wanted to have at one point was the Motorola. Now, Motorola was not always known for their phones. As far back as World War II, Motorola was the one to design the portable radio, the walkie-talkie. They became known for their radios and TVs. In 1960, they introduced the world's first 19-inch cordless TV. And in 1973, they introduced the first handheld portable telephone even though it took them another 10 years to finish developing. After years of technological innovations and Motorola having a global outreach while introducing the first wireless high-speed cable modem in 2002, the company found their cell phone division sales were stagnant and losing money. The chief phone designer that came in to design the Razor in 2003, Jim Wicks, recalled that he loved Motorola's products, but they were ugly. The phone that Motorola had before Razor was released in 1996, called the StarTac, and it too was actually a clamshell type flip phone. But you see how dated it looked in just six years time. Motorola's phones were indeed very unappealing. In the early 2000s, there was a fashion wave where everything hip and youthful had a futuristic, colorful style to it. I made a video about this, by the way. Check it out. So if Motorola didn't find a way to make these phones more appealing, those sales were only going to get worse. And a company's reputation for innovation was going to get tarnished for being behind Nokia's big brick phones. Chief phone designer Jim Wicks and his team made the focus on what the customer wanted. Motorola was good for being functional, but not stylish. So giving their products some more swagger was now the priority. It was summer 2003 when Motorola started getting really serious on a project to beat all the competition with the skinniest phone possible. Released to the public in 2004, the super unique Razor was first marketed as this exclusive luxury phone, but they lowered the price and it ended up selling over 100 million units by July 2006. And by 2008, it became the best selling flip phone to date with over 130 million units sold. The Razer V3, while already being flashy, shiny, and thin, with Bluetooth and a color camera, was just the beginning. Technology was advancing pretty fast, and Motorola immediately started designing new phones with upgrades and capabilities right after the Razer. In 2005, they announced a feminine version of the Razer, the Pebble. It was pretty much the opposite of a Razer. Being thicker and rounder, it seemed to be made for customers who just wanted something softer and not so intimidating. Hello, Moto. The functionality was nothing special, but it still had that unique appeal. And it did have a lot of colors available as well after a year on the market. So it was like the pre-evolved baby form of the Razer, or maybe the Razer's fiance. Now the Pebble's second form, the Sliver, came out in 2005 as well. And these were designed to be thin and lightweight, but in a candy bar style. Those were a pretty popular cell phone style for those who didn't like the flip function. The first inclusion of this lacked a lot of features, but there were five or six different upgrades 
where the newer ones were featuring video and mp3 music access over the internet an expandable memory up to a whopping one gigabyte. Along with the regular Razer, Sliver had a special edition red color in support of AIDS. Now Motorola was pretty busy in 2005. They also released something called the Rocker. It was like the alternate experimental twin of the Sliver. The Rocker initially was known for being the iTunes phone and having decent media player support. Being in 2005, the first version of this was the first phone to use iTunes, right before the iPhone actually came out in 2007. The next versions of the Rocker used the Real Player Media Player instead of iTunes, but ended up being a go-to phone for playing music. In later models, Rocker Z6 and Z6M ended up being two of the coolest phones in the family only available in mainland China and Hong Kong, M-I-N-G Ming. This originally came out in 2005 as well. It was actually an early smartphone with a touchscreen that could flip closed. Similar to the later model of the Rocker was the Riser, released in 2006. This device's specialty was having the screen expand up, revealing that shiny Razer keypad. It seemed to incorporate all the good qualities of the versions before it. It was great with music and downloads. The Z8 version of the Riser functioned as Motorola's first modern smartphone and came out in 2007. Another four-letter phone coming out in 2006 was the Crazer. This one resembled the original Razer design more than any other as it was basically the same, just longer and narrower. Then we have the F-O-N-E phone, also known as Motophone, coming out late 2006. Another candy bar style, this one was simplistic and the first mobile phone to use an electronic paper display. It was a less expensive phone for developing countries and people with reading difficulties. It was a tough phone too, solid like a Nokia but lighter than one. It could apparently take a lot of abuse and still be functional even though it didn't have a whole lot of functions to begin with. In 2007, the Razer 2 finally came out, the actual successor to the Razer, and it boasted to be more sleek and stable, more faster, and have improved picture quality, now being able to display a whole 320 pixels. It was even thinner this time, but also a little wider. It had a luxury edition released in time for Christmas that year that made it look like it was made out of gold. A bit different than a gold-colored Razer, the gold Razer Razer 2 actually looked more luxurious. It even had a touch sensitive screen on the outside, but yet the sales were only half as good as the originals. By now, the iPhone had come out and Motorola's time in the limelight was coming to an end. But with mobile technology quickly being improved every year, Motorola had reason to keep making these phones. In 2008, the Zine came out, something more traditional fashioned. This one was the first Motorola phone to include a 5.0 megapixel camera and one of the few with Wi-Fi capabilities. Later that same year, Moto had the Aura, something that would have opposite appeal to the Zine in that it was very unique. It was marketed as a straight up luxury phone and would open up in a swivel like mechanism. Besides its unique circle screen, they actually made it out of stainless steel, but they were also more expensive. Special editions of this were sold through 2009 that were actually made with gold and diamonds. The Aura was definitely like the spoiled rich granddaughter of the four letter family. As we moved into 2009, the whole technology landscape was changing again and cell phones were becoming smartphones. Motorola's last attempt to hold on to that initial Razer popularity was the Razer 3. And because of all the changing and moving around happening in the tech world, the Razer 3 worldwide release was canceled, mostly due to Motorola's switchover to the Android OS after most of their phones have been using older Linux tech. South Korea did get a chance to see a version of this. It was basically just Razer 2 with a 5.0 megapixel camera. The Razer era was officially over at this point, mostly because of that huge tech switch and because Motorola lost $4 billion, an effect that surely had something to do with the financial crisis of 2008. In 2011, Motorola split their company into Motorola solutions for all commercial Motorola needs like police radios and Motorola mobility, customer-based products like phones. But since the Razer brand did so well and Motorola relied so much 
on the four-letter family, it only seemed wise to find a way to bring the Razer back in this new smartphone era. In 2011, the Razer made a return as an Android, the Droid. Razer. And at the time, it was the thinnest smartphone in the world. A year later, they released an HD version of the Droid Razer, capable of displaying a whopping 720p resolution. From late 2012 to 2014, Motorola sold the Droid Razer M. This was basically a Droid Razer, only smaller. But Google ended up buying Motorola Mobility in 2012 for $12 billion only to sell it to PC company Lenovo for a fraction of that. Now it seemed that the Razer was finally put to rest. That is, until 2020, when the Razer returned once again, rebooted again to reflect today's advancement of technology while actually adhering to the nostalgia of the 2000s era flip phone. The 2020 Razer was a foldable Android smartphone. While not having a visible crease at its folding point and a fingerprint sensor, this was truly something luxurious and nostalgic. Luxurious for its price point of around $1,500. It was compared to the more reasonable and modern Samsung Galaxy Z flip phone that launched around the same time. Critics from PC Magazine and Wired would give it low ratings, saying that it didn't deliver the performance you'd expect from a phone this expensive and that the Razer is still stuck in the past. It seems that with a 2020 Razer, you'd be paying a lot for just the nostalgia of a Razer on top of the expense of having a smartphone that could fold in half. More affordable Android Motorola phones are still being sold through Motorola Mobility, so they don't seem to be too worried about the sales of this new expensive Razer. In fact, they've already released a 2022 version in Europe and China. Both Google and Lenovo made a decent attempt to continue the Razer legacy and it makes sense because the Razer was easily Motorola's biggest phone, or actually their thinnest phone. It was that unique appeal they had and Motorola's undying dedication to satisfy all their customers and make a phone for everyone's taste. To this day, people will still go out of their way to buy a Motorola phone, even when there are arguably much better options because Motorola's reputation is that trustworthy. Motorola takes that trust all the way back to the 20th century, all the way back to them making batteries for radios in World War II. Despite losing billions at the end of the 2000s, they were still able to adapt to new technology and the customers still supported them and the company always reciprocated by giving us a new and improved Razer. Long live the Razer and long live Motorola. Hello, Moto. Let me know what you think. Would you buy the new Razer? Like and subscribe for more random nostalgia and interesting coincidences surrounding said nostalgia. And I will see ya.